Hashtag shoot box speed. All this is, is caused by UFOs. <laughs> For folks uh, watching or listening, uh, shoot box speed. Matt, maybe you could shed some light here. What is the fascination and reason, if any, to not just shoot the film as it's prescribed on the box in as far as the ISO that you're shooting it at? Yeah, I, I think it's people seeing really neat results out of photographers they're inspired by and they just you know they pick it up maybe haven't used it before and then they're baffled when they can't get the same result you know and it's Mm. it's a factor of not knowing the the materials maybe as well or or there's it's it's easy to make a mistake when you're new it's even easier when you make it harder on yourself by you know grossly under or overexposing and not changing other parts of the process. So I think it's a, it's an understanding thing and a, an experience thing. Oh, Strudel's getting fresh mouth as I speak. See, he's angry about it too. Shoot at box speed folks. Well, it seems, it seems, it seems people are posting like almost like they feel it's like a badge of honor to boast that you shot it at such a high ISO. What is that all about? Yeah, I think it's just maybe a a comfort level with shooting digital in the same way. Because, you know, digital, like Mm. like one of my mirrorless cameras shoots at like ISO 12,000 or something. It's like, and it's no problem. It doesn't break a sweat. So you're used to materials, you know, getting pushed that far. And maybe you just want to do that with your own, uh, with film. And there's nothing wrong with going outside of box speed. But I think if you're new to it, shoot a lot of it. And don't budge from that box speed until you know that the results that you're getting are are the results that you know you wanted, or you can you can control it, right? So, you know, is your cam- are the shutter speeds accurate in your camera? Is there light leaks? So you got to weed that stuff out first, and then then go from there. If you're new to it, you know it's cool to do little ones and twos by roll of this, by roll of that, but. Once you've got something you, you've got okay results with, buy a lot of it. Get, you know, get a dozen rolls of it and really, really start to know it. Then when you experiment, you're going to get even better results because you're confident at, okay, this is a 400 speed film. I know exactly what it's going to do at 400. Now let's play around. What if I do it at 100? What if I do multiple speeds in the same roll? How's that going to look? Is it going to mm. be better for scanning, worse? So I think, I think it's just a, Everybody wants that, like, you want to be just as good as the person you saw instantly, right? And you want to get there as fast as possible. And so they see a cool result and they say, oh, 1,600. I can, yeah, no problem. Just follow this step, that step. And then they get the result and they're like, uh, I, I see it all the time processing other folks' black and white film. I think I actually do process more rolls of HP5 at 1,600 than I do at at 400 at box speed, which is just kind of crazy because that's a lot of extra time just sitting there, do, 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 you know, agitating the film and waiting for it. Are people shooting uh, HP5 at 1600? 1600 or 6400? Uh, 16. Oh, 1600. Is, is a note coming in with the film that it was shot at 1600 or did. A lot of them will mark it. So Ilford on the canisters, there's little boxes now. So there's like a 400 box, an 800 box, a 1600 box, and a 3200 box, and they just check the box on the film. Hmm. So I think people, I think also they'll just think, oh, just check the box. That's what it's at. And maybe didn't set the meter on their camera. So there's, you know, there's so many fact. It's just like the the chemistry thing. There's so many factors. You got to isolate them. You have any questions, John? Yeah, I do. (laughs) Uh, Is there a push and pull on the box speed for any camera or any film rather? A lot of films will give you some latitude for push and pull, but only I think some of the the most modern stuff is going to have little boxes on there. Ilford's been great about it. I think a lot of black and white films have that versatility, but on the color films, I think that's all up to the lab and the form mm-hmm. because most color films get a, you know, the same time and temp unless otherwise specified Mm -hmm. where black and white's very custom you know this role gets this time so um i think it's doable but then there's you know i haven't shot geez i'm trying to think the last time i I shoot box speed when i use d96 when i use d76 but as soon as i use pyro everything actually for me gets cut in half i have to Hmm. pull everything everything i have to overexpose and and then uh 
develop at like my quote unquote normal time. So mm. if you don't know what that normal time is or like the ins and outs of your camera, it can get really, you're just kind of shooting in the dark. Yeah. So, so you, if wait you, a minute, I got another question. Okay. Come on. Uh, you, you were talking about multiple uh, speeds on the same roll. You can do that? I mean, you can, but you're going to you basically. Would you do that? Mm, I would, if those, if those other speeds were lower speeds, so essentially pulling the roll, you could be, you'll be fine. Because like, you can always print through a really, really thick negative. Um, Scanning is going to suck for that. But if you, if you start a roll at 400 and you go inside and all of a sudden you're at 3,200, you're mm-hmm. going to have one of two things. You're going to have burnt to a crisp uh, stuff at 400 if you push process it or just like super thin, not going anywhere uh, stuff at 3,200. So if you go, if you go higher on the ISO, weird stuff can happen. But if you happen, you know, if you're starting at 400 and you go outside and it's a day for 100, shoot it at 100. Mm. It'll be fine. Like film can handle so much overexposure, but that underexposure is really where it starts to kick in. And if you're developing the film yourself, you would basically need to compensate the development number, the number of minutes developed based upon the change in the ISO. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And so if you're if you're taking your ISO and you're lowering your ISO, you're effectively giving the film more light. You typically want to reduce that development time. That's known as a pull. And then extending that development time is a push. And this is really the same. If you're used to working with digital pictures and you have those little like exposure sliders in Photoshop, what you're kind of doing when you push that exposure slider to the plus is kind of like when you're pushing and when you go to the minus, it's when you're like pulling. But it also, because film already has kind of a curve to it, you're also changing that contrast when you do that too. So uh, pushing is always going to make your stuff a little contrastier and pulling is going to reduce that contrast a little bit. Very interesting. Now, if you're not developing your own film and you're sending it to a lab, do you need to have somewhat of a relationship with your lab in order to sort of inform them of how you shot this? And if you do, shooting, let's say, 1600 of a 400 ISO black and white film, are you spending more money? Oh, that's a great question. Well, I'll start because I am one of the guys that Midwest that does the black and white processing. I have never once been annoyed that somebody told me how they shot their film. I would love to know how you shot your film because that helps me get you the best result possible. You know, the more information I have to work with, the better. But um, you want to, I, I, yeah, I love hearing that information coming from how the, how the role was shot. And it, it definitely informs the, the processing on it. Um, I, re- I recommend starting with a roll at at box speed see see how the results look because um, unless you ask some labs don't even let you know what developer they're using or you know how they right right so i i've again i never hate having that conversation i love hearing that somebody's engaged enough that they want to know maybe they want to learn the process so uh i never feel like that's um that's a bad thing it's it's great to have that kind of relationship know how they're handling it it's kind of like um you know learning a little bit more about um, any process or where your food comes from or anything i mean it's not like we're we're there at the the dining table asking you know what the chicken's name was but we want to know a little bit more information (laughs) get the the, the chicken's name yeah probably not (laughs) well excellent so your recommendation my takeaway from mr matt mirage is that if you're new to film photography, shoot at box speed until you kind of get a grip on what you're doing, how it looks, and you're happy. And then if you want to experiment from there, go for it. Go for it. Shoot a bunch of that film, though. Like, w- shooting one roll of film will tell you that you got lucky, you know? Like, results from one roll of film tells you you got lucky. Two tells you, okay, you're getting a little bit better with this. And rolls after that show your mastery of that, you know, of that specific product and your tools and and like if you're testing like if you're testing out a camera this is not a good time to throw a new expensive or experimental film like the fpp um the color infrared right 
Oh, yes. It's, it's a special treat to have that type of film. It's very, very little is available. Why risk it throwing that in the camera that you don't know what the result's going to be? You're probably going to do it in one that you know is good. Shutter speeds are good. Light seals are good. And you can get a pretty controllable result. And then after that, yeah, start messing around. Go for it. So that's that's my take. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Matt. That makes good sense. <laughs>